It's been five years now since I tried my first external keyboard outside of my computer. I've been going through 100% keyboard, 75%, 65%, 60%. I was shocked that I could still type normally with those small keyboards that I had. And then one year ago, I went down the rabbit hole of split ergonomic keyboards with my first corn that you saw me using a while ago. Ever since then, I've been trying a few different split keyboards. For example, this year I tried the uh, TBK Mini right here. It's got Charles Fox switches, very obnoxious switches here. <laughs> um, it's clicky. I love clickies, not because of the sound, but because of the tactility of click bars. I don't like click jackets. I think they sound like crap. So far, I've been going with 42 keys. So this is one half of the TBK Mini from Basta Keyboard. They somehow modded it on AliExpress to make it hot swappable, but the solder was really poorly done. So I ended up ditching it because it stopped working on one or two keys and it started to fall apart basically. It was great, but I, I could not expect that much from an AliExpress product. Not that I hate AliExpress, but on this one particularly, I know it is handmade. It has been soldered by hand. So I'm sort of okay with it having a few defects because it's, it's a lot cheaper than buying it pre-made on the Pasta keyboard. And then right now I'm using this. Um, this is the Ferris Sweep with MX switches. I use it with Aco uh, Cream Purple Pros, which surprisingly I like a lot. They are 30 grams of force to actuate, and I usually go for like 55 or 60 grams of force in terms of switches, but over the years, I tend to prefer switches that are much lighter on my hands because I have RSI, especially on my right hand here, uh, because of my wrist. So I try to manage myself, manage my hand, and that's just basically it. So I'm going to show you how it's like to code with the Ferris Sweep. Now keep in mind, I have my own constraints and my own preferences. That being, I don't use QWERTY, I don't use Azerty anymore. I use a layout called MTGAP, as you probably know. And from my perspective, it's a layout that is great in terms of roles. That means that I get to press two keys like this almost uh, all of the time on the home row and therefore there are things that I cannot afford when using home row mods. If you don't know what home row mods, it's basically just another behavior for tap and another behavior when you hold it. And I've been playing around with the Fairy Sweep for about a week now. I really like it. It's really portable. That's one of the things that I like about it. So without further ado... Okay, let's go! Okay, so here is my ZMK config file. As you can see, I use first and foremost home row mods, okay? Uh, I have it set to the standard Control Alt GUI and Shift. Uh, in Mac, this is Command Key. And then you have the combos. The combos, I'm still testing it out. I have Grave here, and I have Tilde here. I have Pipe here, I guess. And down here, I have Backslash. I'm still testing out if I like it or not, but I don't like the fact that I am going to press two keys with these fingers. Okay, so I'm still testing it out, but they've been quite good, actually. Uh, the reason I put them down here is that it's not a roll on MTGAP. If I were to put it here, which is OU, it's such a frequent roll that I'm going to trigger it without wanting to. And down here, you have two types of hold tap. There is the regular one at 200 milliseconds. I'm still testing if I want to bump it higher or lower. I like 200 for now. I think I got good with shifting uh, some letters here and there. In comparison, the short hold tap is like the hold tap, but it's just shorter at 120 milliseconds. I mainly use it for two things. The first one being shift on the enter key here, and the second one being the backspace key that doubles up as a layer key here. These are things that I want to activate faster because mainly if I ever so slightly want to hold this key, that means I don't want to press enter, I want to do something else. So sometimes the shift and the uh, going to layer thing, I need it to go faster. So that's why I use this. So here you have layer three for all sorts of stuff. So then you have the key map. I'm going to leave the link in the description again. So here you have my key map, home remote, etc. The only notable change from a typical configuration is this queue right here. 
So this goes into layer four, which is my mouse key. So I can go mm, and then this becomes like to move uh, my mouse around like this. I can scroll, I can click or I can like right click. Then I can escape. The other thing that you'll notice is the fun cluster over here. So I wanted my symbols to be just a button for that layer too, okay? Because I don't want to deal with the timing of uh, the home run mods on this particular layer because I need my symbols ASAP, okay? Then you have a short hold tab here for enter and shift. As I said, I never hold down the enter key unless my intent is to do something else. Then here, I must keep this at the usual hold tap timing because this goes into hyper key and space, which I use with uh, carabiner elements and raycast, like so. And then you have a layout toggle. This should probably be shorter because I don't usually hold backspace. And sometimes when I do press escape to exit Vim, uh, Vim's insert mode, for example, I somehow make it too fast, like, like that. And then I'm not out of the insert mode and sometimes it kind of types gibberish. So yeah, that's my layer, that's my base layer. Then you have the right layer, uh, right layer for this fun key right here. Uh, this one, mm, I should update the label though. <laughs> yeah, so you have tab, which technically should be under base layer. And then you have shift tab, because I want to go forward and backward. And then there, there's this one actually. Uh, I don't know if I can use it. Like This allows me to navigate between uh, Chrome tabs easily. And then you have option backspace, which is your typical option backspace. You have home and and the symmetry then you have alt and left and alt and right which is basically um, the way mac handles uh, what you have like control arrow on windows and linux so this is just pure navigation and then we have some leftover symbols pipe tilde grave backslash uh, these are just there because i wanted to try fitting them into another layer but now i'm trying with combo so i like to keep it there for practicality then you have a backspace here. I'm trying to have the backspace key on my index finger, but it's kind of hard, so I leave it there for now, just for training purposes. Then you have left, down, up, right. The reason I have left here instead of here for the usual Vim is, once again, I use MTGAP. And for me, the H key is here, which allows me to go left. So I like to keep it like, you know, consistent. So left, H, and then the other things follows along. Then you have some shortcuts here for quitting windows, uh, cutting, copying, and pasting. I could replace this with anything else. And then these are just basically uh, home and uh, end. But sometimes on macOS, home and end does not work properly. You have to do command left and command right to go to the end of a line. So yeah. Then you have option delete here. Okay and you have the delete key, page down key for the symmetry of the down key, up and page up for the symmetry once again, and then you have the insert, which I probably don't use that often. And finally, I have my escape key on the thumb within that layer. This is one that I'm kind of iffy about. I'm trying to maybe put it on some combos, but we'll see. Then um, on the try layer, which basically means uh, you hold both, I have my F key, my function keys, um, and my volume keys and Bluetooth, etc. I still have the bootloader key uh, on that layer because I just need to flash my keyboard ever so often. Finally, you have the mouse layer. The mouse layer is pretty much a copy paste from the try layer and is pretty much new, so I have to modify it on the fly. Um, I just have here my left click and right click. Be careful on macOS because sometimes it can get swapped with an option in the settings. And then you have the move left, move down, move up, move right, scroll down, scroll up, scroll left, scroll right, which is basic mouse movement. And I kind of like it. It has its uses. When uh, Home Row, the, the Home Row app that I'm using uh, does not work, it sometimes comes in handy. So that's basically it. 
So let's just go straight into uh, speed type with that dev and monkey type to see how it goes. So here we have a Scala text. Let me just zoom in a little bit. Okay, let's go. Oops. I, I don't know, I still have to get used to shift on this one because it's faster, but I got so used to shift with uh, my index that it's kind of like hard, you know? Like right there, I just like did not hold it long enough. Okay. should try to practice this but uh, then again I just got this for like a few days now yeah 52 it's not too bad I'm going to try to use this shift key here uh, the underscore mm, mm, so many underscores here Not too bad. So there you have it. I'm really happy with the first sweep, though it's kind of frustrating at times to not go as fast as I used to, but hey, these things take some learning curve, it takes some time. So one word of advice if you're about to get into that rabbit hole. The first layout that you're going to practice is going to stick with you for a while, and it's going to take a lot, a lot of time, much more time to unlearn something and to learn something new. So keep that in mind when you're trying a new layout. With that said, I'm out. See you guys around.